slide a kneecap off and we're gonna stand up and then it's gonna take two more shots to knock us down. And on the way up, we're gonna take your other kneecap and we're gonna get up and then it's gonna take three shots to get us down. And when we do, we're gonna take another hunk out of you. Before, before long, we're the, gonna be the last one standing. What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video and in today's video, we are here to talk about the Lions linebacker position, in particular, one man, that man is Jamie Collins, because we have gotten the reports that the Lions are taking trade, basically they're taking calls for a possible trade of Jamie Collins, and this isn't just the Lions are taking calls, the Lions are legit about this, they held him out of practice today, he did not participate, it was not injury related, it was not a rest day, so the Lions are looking, they're fielding calls for a trade in they're probably going to see if they can make it happen. Now, if you guys did check out my last video, I put that little thing at the top of the comment section. The Lions, because of the contract that Jamie Collins has, if the Lions wanted to make it a little bit more appealing, possibly for this season, the Lions could give Jamie Collins like a bonus, which would be guaranteed money that he'd get right now, but it would drop money off that base salary. The Lions could do that to lower the base salary to make his trade a little bit more appealing. It would take some money out of the Lions' pocket, but we have the money to do it. So if they really want to get this done... That's a possible option to make it a little bit more appealing. Today, I wanted to dive into some of this film from last week, but also some other games and talk about maybe why the Lions are doing this, you know, what Collins brought to the table and maybe what the Lions are looking for at that linebacker position. And we know that Derek Barnes is going to get the snaps next week if Jamie Collins is not on this team, or I should say Sunday. We'll just have to wait and see how it plays out throughout the weeks. But either way, we know he's going to get snaps regardless if Jamie Collins is here or not because Dan Campbell told us he deserves a shot and he's someone that was on their minds and what I like about Dan Campbell is he doesn't just say something there's action here they feel something they believe it they're gonna make something happen and the action here was we're fielding trade offers we're gonna hold them out of practice the conversations about it and now they're taking action so you have to love that side of it as they try to build this team because the Lions truly believe that they can be better than what they were. Whole breakdown recap of the game, you know, review, like takeaways video. And man, I just kept stressing that game. Like, man, we beat ourselves. There were so many times that we beat ourselves offensively. We controlled the game defensively. You know, our run defense from the first half to the second half was just night and day. You want to talk about, you know, halftime adjustments even though Peyton Manning says you don't really get a lot of time in a halftime regardless they came out in the second half the run defense was much better Dan Campbell said hey we didn't give up 100 yards rushing but they had a guy in Aaron Jones who had nine carries in the first half for 49 yards that's 5.4 yards of pop the guy averaged less than two and a half yards a carry in the second half okay the Lions run defense was definitely much better in the second half they did do some tweaks like throwing Jalen Reese Maven on the field when they went to the four defensive linemen sets if they felt it was a run they'd run with three linebackers they'd put Jamie Collins in the middle, they put Jalen Reese Maven on the outside, and they'd have Alex on the outside. If they felt like it was probably more of a pass, they'd have AJ Parker out there instead of Jalen Reese Maven. They made some adjustments. We saw much more John Penicini on early downs to stop the run. And like Dan Campbell said, we need to do a better job of getting pressure. So that's give and take with that situation, but you still need to guy have guys like Trey Flowers and Romeo win some of those one-on-one. -on -one. Especially in the first half showed us that man, they can hang. They just cannot beat themselves like they did. And now it's the Jamie Collins spot. And we've talked about this. We talked about it at after week one in San Francisco, me and Rattle last second dose. We're going to talk about it tomorrow. It was just kind of like a matter of time when Derek Barnes is going to get these snaps. And now it looks like it's going to be happening this week. I want to dive into some of this film and take a look at Jamie Collins and some of the stuff that he brought to the table and maybe what the Lions are looking for. See, I think the first thing that you have to realize with this situation is that the Lions didn't bring in Jamie Collins. They, you know, they gave him a pay cut this offseason for one, where the Lions lowered his base salary like, you know, $5 million and they could try to do that again to make the trade a little bit more appealing for other teams but they didn't bring in Jamie Collins he was here he was one of our highest played players you kept him on the roster he's a vet he's experienced but he was not the type of player that the Lions brought in one thing that I went back and did is I looked at you know the Saints linebacker core when Aaron Glenn was there and you just see that 230 to 240 pound linebacker fast can fly around get downhill some coverage ability it's just it's just a different type of player Alex and Jamie two different types of player Jalen Reese Maven a different type of player. Anthony Pittman's a different type of player. It's just a different fit 
for Jamie Collins. And it's not to say Jamie's a bad player because I don't think he's bad. Still does some nice things for us in run defense in this game as well. Uh, but it's just not a beautiful mesh in terms of the responsibilities they want to give him, some of the pass coverage responsibilities. This is the lowest pass coverage he's ever had. I know it's only through two games, but the lowest grade he's ever had in his career in pass coverage. You know, it's some of the responsibilities that they want to ask of him that he struggles with because he's just not built for what the Lions want to ask their linebackers to do. Dan Campbell said it. We want our linebackers, I'll have to go back and watch the film, he said, but we want our guys to get downhill. And that's something that Jamie Collins, you know, he's just built different. He's built for a different style. It worked for the last regime, but this one is different. So we'll see what happens there. But this first play I'm going to show you is him here at the outside linebacker position. I know this one's blurry. They're not all like this. It's just this first one came out blurry. But you see him at outside linebacker. Now, one thing to note here is that Alex is the guy with the green dot. They did this back with New Orleans as well. He was the guy that got the defense into place. Notice Alex is also our team captain, so it makes sense. You know, he's the guy that makes the adjustments. He moves the pieces around. They trust him. They like him. Dan Campbell said after the game, you know, he wasn't perfect, but he did fly around. And I think you could see that watching back. He did fly around. He got involved in a lot of plays. He also got beat multiple times, but he did get involved. And he's the type of player that they trust and that they like for this defense. About finding that other inside linebacker. And with the drafting of Derek Barnes, remember what Dan Campbell said as soon as they brought in Derek Barnes. He said, we want him to play Mike. He wants to come in. He wants 55. He's going to play Mike linebacker. Mike, a lot of times in a 3-4 defense as an inside linebacker, is the guy that's on the strong side. Jamie to the strong side, and Alex will play on the weak side. But that's a lot of talking. Let's dive into this. Here he's that outside linebacker. The Lions are going to go with one inside linebacker. You can see A.J. Parker sliding in the box here. They played a lot of two-shell deep safety to try to limit some of those passes. And also, you were missing some of your corners, especially when if you went down. So it made sense that you would do that. But here they're my outside linebacker. You got a third and very short and he's unable to set the edge on this play. Now, I'm not saying this is an easy edge set by him because he is trying to go out there and make a play on Aaron Jones. He kind of dives in here on the fullback fake, and then he's unable to get and get back outside with a bad angle that he takes on this fake. He's unable to get out there and stop this run, but he's still in a position here where maybe a little bit more athletic. I mean, keep in mind, he's a little bit older too. He's, I think, 32 years old at this point. Uh, maybe he can get out there and make that stop, but he's unable to get out there and get out and make a play. And what's important, I think, about this play and why I want to show it is, first off, the Lions like versatility with their linebackers, just like teams do with every position. And one thing the Lions like in terms of versatility with their linebackers that Alex can play outside linebacker. Barnes could play outside linebacker. I wholeheartedly believe that because I did it back in college. He only played off-ball linebacker for one season at Purdue. So I believe he can play outside linebacker if they need him to. They want him to be Mike, but there are certain situations where you want to do things like this. You want to stack the defensive line, and you want to get your linebacker on the outside, maybe with a little bit more speed. But this is just one of those situations where he's unable to get out there, unable to make the stop, and we give him a first down. He just doesn't have the speed to run down Aaron Jones, but it also wasn't a great angle. And I kind of understand that because, you know, it's just a fullback handoff. You want to go in there and try to help make play against the run. This is one of the those things that I'm going to want to ask Rad about when we get on the show tomorrow because he played the linebacker position. He knows much more about this than I do. But from what I've researched, you know, the triangle vision that these linebackers have to have in these situations. Now, Dan Campbell wants his inside linebackers to get downhill. It's something that he stressed after the game talking about it. And you can see how the defensive line is set up. This is your five-man front, our base package. You're going to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities. As we talked about this, really this whole offseason with the one-gap defense is this is built for a defensive lineman to get more stats, right? They're going to have have more stats going downhill, but they want their linebackers to play downhill. That doesn't mean have bad vision, and we'll get to that, but they want these guys to play downhill instead of waiting, right? This isn't necessarily looking for linebackers to be taking on blocks. It's more avoid blocks, pick up the read, get downhill, and make a play. Look at a team like the Saints. Just look at how they're built, right? They have a strong defensive line, and that's what the Lions try to do this offseason. They invested heavily in defensive line. Obviously, Nick Williams and guys like that, but the Brockers, you know, bringing in the Levi's, the Aleem McNeil's. And I'm thinking the triangle probably for Alex is the Y, which is Lazard in this situation, probably to the center, to the running back. Uh, but either way, what I noticed about this play and just kind of the difference between Alex and Jamie. You know, it's very similar situations, just the difference here. So first off, like we said, Alex with the green dot, he's telling, you know, he's moving guys around. You can see he tells Jamie to go over to that side because he sees Lassard cutting across the field. And you can see Alex is kind of aware of everything going on, even though he does overstep here and he allows this cutback lane. One thing that I like about Alex is that he has the ability like that to get square to the line. I would like his shoulders to be a little more squared here, but to get square to the line, change of direction, things like that, that way he can get back into the play. In comparison to a guy like Jamie, who doesn't really have that, you know, change of direction ability. And then Campbell talked about they want their guys to get downhill, and we're definitely going to see that with Derek Barnes 
later in this video. Here, Alex takes a misstep. He oversteps here for this cutback lane, but he's at least able to get back and get a hand on him. He doesn't make the tackle, but he's able to get back into play a little bit. Here's Jamie Collins in a similar situation. You can see, again, Alex is pointing out the motion here, so he's getting the safety to slide down to help out. The 49 is going to cross block here, and you can see Jamie Collins. It looks like he doesn't even read the backfield on this play at all, where the ball is. He just kind of follows 49 with this play, and he doesn't just misstep right here. He completely oversteps out of the play. It's like he didn't even know where the ball was here, and then it's just kind of that inability to get back into the play, and if it wasn't for the defensive lineman breaking off and making that tackle, he's probably going with a full head of steam into our safeties. Or then you get a play like this, and so obviously you have James Jones coming across the field here on a sweep, and A.J. Dillon's kind of going to become the lead blocker, and Collins is following that well. It would be nice if Amani and Will got upfield to kind of break this off a little bit. That would be very helpful, but when I just see, you know, kind of the angle that he takes, he doesn't ever be able to get downhill. Remember when Dan Campbell said about Jamie Collins in comparison to Alex, he feels like Jamie Collins doesn't always play with the same effort like Alex. Obviously, that's not a good thing to hear at all. And when you just watch this play, this is slowed down a little bit, but just, I mean, he is unable to get around the Alan Lazard. He's basically getting blocked by Alan Lazard on this play. The effort just doesn't look fantastic, but also, I guess, the fit to get out to the edge here. It doesn't help us at all on that play. To say Jamie's a bad player, there's certain things that he does well, and like Dan Campbell said, there's certain situations that we like him. Third down runs. Okay, because he's got size. That's the lone inside linebacker. You can play, you know, let's say a six-man front, and then he can just pick and choose. He's got the ability to do things like that, and you'll see some of those clips, and I also think he's not terrible in zone coverage either, at least reading where routes are the experience there and I think you see that on this play so he'll work in certain defenses but you see it here passing off with Alan Lazard picking that up he has that ability right so that's great but I look at a guy like Derek Barnes and I ask myself okay well can Barnes do that and we haven't had the same sample size so still some of this is up in the air but I go back and I watch some of his preseason games here he is against the Colts and I just watched the recognition neck recognition here the communication that passes off first off fantastic by Dean Marlowe but watch Derek Barnes right here okay watch him pass off this crossing route with the safety watch bam recognize it he passes it off and he's able to follow the receiver out and man this was a heck of a play by Dean Marlowe obviously we get a pass break up there thing that Jamie Collins can do well is he can be a mismatch when he's blitzing right we see that he can be a mismatch in these situations he's bigger you see it here against the running back just too much size gets low and he kind of pushes the running back into Aaron Rodgers for this sack he has that ability and then you ask yourself okay well can Derek Barnes bring that to the table for me the answer is yes Derek Barnes can bring that ability this this looks really bad I'm not sure why this looks so bad here he is now this time he's not gonna be picked up but he plays with the same aggressiveness and he's very strong the thing is with Barnes 29 bench press reps super one of the strongest linebackers in this class because the guy played defense event right and you can see here just the closing speed to fly down and be able to make a play on the quarterback he gives you the same ability to get downhill and get after the quarterback as I said I don't think Jamie Collins is a bad linebacker right I mean you see here kind of the recognition picking up this screen out of the backfield jumping on it and then you see of course Alex Anzalone who Dan Campbell said was all over the field fly down he's able to come down the running back leaks out of the backfield or tight end does he can sit on a flat but when they run a route like this where he has the man coverage assignment he's just unable to get out there and make the play and you kind of know as an offense before you match up hey if we get Collins on a running back here he's not going to be able to get out there and make the play and that's exactly what we saw here so some of the responsibilities that you ask of him it just doesn't fit perfectly so obviously a nice route by Aaron Jones I like the fake outside but Jamie Collins sees it right this is matchup they're playing man coverage in the back end as you can see Jamie Collins sees it and he's going to try to run out there and get out there on the running back but he's just not fast enough to get out there and make the play you can see he's got a good angle on him He's just not fast enough to beat him to the corner. And yeah, you could say, well, you know, he's giving up on the play. Regardless, he didn't get him to the corner. When I look at a guy like Barnes, I don't know why these clips look so bad, but I see the closing speed with a guy like Derek Barnes. The close down, fly down on these plays, that's the type of linebacker that they were looking for. See how good Derek Barnes is in man coverage. We saw the play he made his own coverage, dropping back, getting some depth, nearly having an interception against the Steelers. Notice the switch with the linebackers. Alex Anzalone to the left. They put Jamie Collins on the strong side. Now, this is one of those situations where you can see how he's already leaning towards the run here he's not waiting at all but they're running the clock out so this wasn't a huge guess and yeah he makes the guy miss makes a tackle in the backfield so that's great but he just bet on the fact that it was going to be a run play and that's because of the situation that we were in but to me this was the moment when did you start guessing on your bets i've just been guessing <laughs> and who were your picks for week one Pats, Pats minus three over the Dolphins and 
Bills over the Steelers, minus six and a half. So I'm sure you're confused what the heck is going on here. Let's go back a little bit to kind of set the stage. Patriots and Dolphins. I kind of like the Patriots logo. I feel like that's underrated. Patriots all the way. Don't be this guy. Download BetQL to make smart bets. BetQL's best bet computer scans 350,000 unique bets per year to give you recommendations on all games, on all major sports. Take the Saints. Michael Thomas, he's going to carry that team. He's going to kill it. I'm, trust me. Trust me on this one. Bro, Thomas ain't playing week one. Get up-to-date injury and lineup changes. That way things like this don't happen. I just put the money on them because of him. Solely because of him. Allegra, who should I take? Oh, it's Alexa. 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 It's not plugged in. It covers spreads, over-unders, prop player bets, and all the tools that you need to do your own research. Plus, you can see who the pros are backing. Keep up with real-time line movement with your bets. Background knowledge on team summaries, how they've done against the spread. You can look at scenarios, home, away, on grass. Head to try.betql.co slash dose of Dion to get started. Use promo code DOD for 25% off. So hopeless. So hopeless. Now download BetQL. Wait, wait, down. This was kind of like the, hey, it's going to happen. It's just when does it happen? It's just when do the Lions put the trust in the young guy to do this? The fact that when you need to get off the field, you're down by eight. You pretty much know the offense is running the football. You put the rookie in and take your vet off the field. That tells me a lot. It does. And I think this is kind of what we're going to see going forward. Long side of the field, him and Alex Anzalone, you know, you're going to see the communication here. But when they knew they were running the football, basically, and they had to get off the field, they trusted Derek Barnes over the vet to help them because of his ability to get downhill. I think this is what the Lions are looking for from that other linebacker position a lot. When Dan Campbell talks about the ability to get downhill, I go back and I watch the Saints from last season where Campbell was as well, and he watched a Demario Davis, similar size to a guy like Alex Anzalone, right? And it was Alex and Demario that were holding it down. Demario's flying downhill. He's attacking downhill. He's much faster. And that's what Derek Barnes gives me some vibes of here. His ability to jump out in some man coverage, help us on some zone underneath. But plays like this, you know, just watch how he shoots he doesn't hesitate but also notice how he stays square to the line see how he gets square to the line getting down avoiding blockers and then you can see the finish right there getting down and making the tackle they trusted the young guy to get them off the field over the vet that told me a lot he just told me that maybe they weren't 100 percent ready to go with the young guy but after this week and seeing what happened changes had to be made all right this coaching staff is not willing to sit back wait around for oh it's gonna happen we'll get it no they went out and made changes and you saw it on the second down play all right look at the communication the motion comes over so alex and Derek barnes switch spots he's not having to lunge or lean a certain way to kind of guess because he has that change of direction ability bam plants his feet all right what do we see from collins earlier overstepping and he doesn't really read anything out of the backfield and plants and he's right there for the cutback lane force him back the other way and Derek Barnes, prepare for the cutback, gets back into it, gets low, and he's going to help us finish on this play, and nothing allowed there. That's the kind of thing that Barnes can bring table. He's just more of a fit for this defense, and that told me all I needed to know when week one you put in the rookie when you need to get off the field because you know they're going to run the football. It's 49ers clips. The Lions are playing a 6-1 defense, which leaves it clean for Alex and Derek Barnes much more. We're not always going to be in a six-man front because it's not always going to be obvious, you know, rushing downs. I mean, we did a little bit against San Fran because that's pretty much all they do, but even like Dan Campbell said heading into this Ravens game, we're going to be running a lot of safety in the box. Deep safeties looks like they did against the Green Bay Packers, so they're going to adjust to the scheme schematically, but it's just about the play style, the ability to get downhill, the ability to avoid blockers, change the direction, the speed, the closing ability. He is the type of player that the Lions have built this defense for. What I like here is that the Lions aren't just sitting and waiting around. Like, let's be honest. We all know this situation. Jamie Collins is not the best fit for this defense. And it is unfortunate. You spent how much money on this guy when you brought him in? And it was right for the last game. It's just not right for this one. But this is what happens. We know it. We've been through it many times. When you change regimes, when you change new staffs, Certain guys, they just don't fit as well anymore. And the Lions did what they could. They tried to make these guys work, and they tried to fit it the best that they could. But they also did draft a Derek Barnes. I mean, it was clear that it's going to be part of the future for this team. It was just when. And I like that the Lions are just sitting around waiting. Jamie Collins has the lowest coverage grade of his career. I know it's only through two games, giving up a 155 pass rating. But at the same time, if I can tell you, hey, we can really hurt the Lions if we get them in man coverage assignments with Jamie Collins and we put a running back runner out, he's not going to be able to keep up. That's tough. 
What are the Lions going to do? If I can tell you that, offensive coordinators will figure out ways to get him in space and beat you that way. They'll make it very simple. Fox has to step up for sure, but he's the type of player that still fits his defense. The responsibilities they can put him in, he can handle those responsibilities much better than what Jimmy can. Jimmy is a solid run defender. He doesn't miss a lot of tackles, but that's also the area where we think Derek Barnes is probably at his best as well. Throw in the fact that schematically, probably not the best fit. Then the fact that the Lions necessarily don't feel like maybe he was giving great effort, and that's obviously not good in comparison to a guy like Alex and you add on top of that that they know that he made some mistakes and got out of positions on certain plays that's going to lead to a decision like this and I'm just happy the Lions didn't sit back and just wait and say hey let's just see what happens like you saw two weeks okay it doesn't work let's do something about it and that doesn't mean you have to trade him away but let's do something that's what I'm talking about Alex and Demario Davis okay this was the thing both these guys, very similar in size. You got a guy like Demario Davis, 6'2", 236, ran a 4'5", 240. Super similar to a guy like Derek Barnes. Alex, uh, 6'3", 238. So very similar in size. And just watch, Demario Davis, he plays downhill. He's more attacking. Alex, you know, can be the guy that's the communicator, moves things around. We even saw it in the preseason. Oh, back in the preseason. We saw back in the preseason when Anthony Pittman was out there with um, Derek Barnes. Anthony Pittman was the guy that was moving players around. Jalen Reese Maven was the guy that would move players around with the green dots. And I like it because you're giving yourself a chance to see not only the young guy, but giving your chance on self a chance on the season and betting on first off the guy that you drafted, but betting on your scheme and betting on what you know you brought in. And I love that. I love the betting on it because you believe in what you do and you believe that it can be better. So I like the fact that they're taking the shot here. Let's see what happens. All right. You know, you're 0-2. You got an extra game this season that's going to be helpful let's not wait around let's make a change and let's figure this thing out and I think that's what they're doing here and I think there's clear reasons for it Collins is not a bad player all right he can run defend he can play coverage but it's just not the right scheme he's just not the right fit for this defense he was I think the Mike last he's the guy with the green dot on his helmet last season you know when you watch the linebackers play he was that guy but the Lions have Alex as that guy. Running back goes out for a legit route other than a flat. You just can't have him do it because he's a liability. Yes, did Alex get beat? Yes, but he was at least in position. He made some plays. He did get beat, but he showed the ability to fly around and push the guy out of bounds. He couldn't even catch Aaron Jones. He pushes Aaron Jones out of bounds. Yes, does he get beat by the tight end catch over the middle? He does. But even on that play, he does what the guys are taught, right? You're in a red area, basically. He's got to play through the hands. He just puts his hands up late. I thought it was a great job by the tight end because he put his hands up late he didn't sell anything so Alex didn't have the timing perfect there and he missed out but he was at least tight enough in coverage Jamie Collins there's certain things that you just can't ask of him to do this these cover situations won't just go away from Collins if he's out there because that's just how this defense is built for the responsibilities if you look at a guy like Demario Davis you know you look how many targets he had or even Alex even though he started in nine games the guy had 27 targets last year with New Orleans anyway again I want to give a shout out to, to the sponsor of today's video BetQL use the link in the description for 25% off. And as always, thank you Prime for watching and I'm out.